I believe I have found the world's smallest lithium battery charger. It looks like a USB-C port, but really, it has the entire circuitry needed to charge your lithium cells right on board. Let's take a closer look at this. So this is based on a LP4054 chip, which is a chip made specifically for, you know, small wearables and, and what have you. It's like a TP4056, but it's a little bit more um, feature packed. And you can see here, it has a couple support components. It's got two LEDs, uh, one that shows you that it's charging, one that shows you that it's done charging, or uh, essentially the CC and the CV modes. And then you've got these tiny little pads, uh, one positive and one negative for your lithium cell. Now, the only problem I see with this is it doesn't include protection. There would typically be something like a DW01 IC on board, but this one does not have it. So it's best to use this with protected cells. Although it does say that below 2.8 volts, it will attempt to trickle charge a dead cell. So that could be a good thing or that could be a bad thing. So let's put this together into a little circuit and see what we get. So I got it all hooked up here to a couple of wires and to a battery holder. Uh, I'll tell you it was not fun uh, soldering to these tiny little pads, but I did get it done. So first things first, we're going to plug it in and we're going to check the open circuit voltage. It should be 4.2 plus minus 1%. So you see you got a little green light there that tells you that the charging is complete, but I do find it funny the red LED is still on in this case. So I don't know if it's just, you know, supposed to be there, but dim, but whatever. We have the Kiwi's HD118E, which we're going to check the voltage with. So 4.222. So that is just about half a percent out. So that is within spec. Spec is 1%. So that's pretty good. Now we're going to uh, drop the cell in. And the cell should pull down the voltage. Uh, and this thing should go from the green LED to the red LED. And then we're going to have to disconnect this, put the meter in series, and check the charging current. So here we go. As soon as this touches, it should go into... There we go. Yeah, it does. So it goes into the charging mode. So red LED only. Let me reconfigure this for current now. Okay, got it all set up for current. Uh, I love using these little Wago terminals for that. So let's see what happens when I plug this in. It should go right to charging. Yeah, it's in charging mode. And we have 211 milliamps. Now, it should be more than that, I presume, because this cell is not exactly fully charged. Let's go down into the milliamps and see if we get anything different. Okay, so I disconnected it right but by, by removing this but now it stays in constant voltage like it's done so it has some sort of fault detection that it found it figured out that the cell was unplugged so if i unplug the usb and plug it back in will it work no it's not working that's interesting maybe it reads the burden voltage here let's uh let's just pull the cell out and then Pop it back in and see what happens. No, it refuses to charge. Perhaps one of our connections are, are aren't good. No, because it was fine before. That's an interesting behavior because now it won't let me charge. Unplug. Plug back in. Hmm. I don't know if the increased resistance of the multimeter being in current mode is affecting us. Because, yeah, this refuses to charge now. That is very interesting. So let's start over from scratch. What if I pull this out completely? And then I remove the cell. And then I plug this back in and then I put the cell back in nope it refuses to charge 
I put it back in the, to the 10 amp port. It's still not charging. Oh, here we go. That reset it. Maybe there was a time delay. So I'm going to switch it to the other one. That is interesting. So let's see if we flip it right to the 10 amp port. Plug and unplug. Hmm. That's odd. It won't charge while in this port. The milliamp port. Very interesting. I found a couple of cells that are lower state of charge. They are still kind of sketchy cells, so we'll see if it actually does work the way I hope it'll work. So there we go. Keep an eye on that light. I'm going to plug in the charger. I'm trying to reach the 600 milliamp stated current limit. Oh, there it is. 600 milliamps right away. So yeah, we just needed a cell with a lower state of charge. So this thing can indeed deliver the full 600 milliamps. It'll just depend on the state of charge of your cell. So this one here was at a voltage of about 3.6 volts, uh, which for a you know 3.7 volt nominal cell is just below halfway charged. And so this will take quite a while to come up to, to uh, full charge. So we're just going to let this buck for a little bit. Let's see what the uh, charging board looks like under the thermal camera. Now this is the uh, Unity UTI 720E, but I also have a macro lens put onto it. So here we go. So that chip, let me see if I can focus you in. This isn't the best, but uh, I'm doing my best. Oh, nope, it just switched. Oh, piece of plastic is in the way. So looking at that, I'm getting a nice shot here. So it looks like the hotspot. Get a screenshot. The hotspot is like at 100. My studio lights are stopping me from seeing 112. So it is toasty. It is quite hot. Looking at my wiring, my wiring is completely fine. The cell itself is sitting at like 27. But yeah, that that I see is quite hot. So it does get hot. But the thing is, it's such a little spot that the rest of my finger sort of like cools it down. So keeping that in mind that the chip on the backside gets to, you know, 125 degrees C in open air, um, really the utility of these things is for having tiny little cells in your project, being able to charge it. But I would just make sure to sort of glue it on the cell uh, or in your project uh, facing away from the cell. I wouldn't want this to sit directly on the cell because that would heat it up and, you know, possibly shorten its lifespan. Now that brings us to the other point. Uh, this has no mounting anything. Uh, there's no tabs. Uh, it's really the size of the USB, uh, except that the USB's sort of uh, ground pads that, that solder in to help it mechanically stay on the board are already used on this board. They don't go through or anything, so you can't just like easily implement this into your design. So I think what I would do is I would scuff up the surface here and then super glue it into your project. Um, that's probably the only thing that I can think of. Otherwise, you know, it'd be great maybe if you can pick this up and desolder the USB-C connector and then have this sitting somewhere with two wires going to a USB connector that's panel mounted or something. So I think the utility of this is really up to your imagination and it really does have to be up to your imagination to figure out how to mount this to your device. But honestly, I think at this point I would just, you know, glue it, super glue it to your cell. 
So there's a link in the description if you want to get yours. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you would use this little board for. Thanks for watching.